What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the circular pattern tool to create copies of objects along arcs and curves inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked in yesterday's video about how to use the rectangular pattern tool to create copies of objects along a straight line. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how to use the circular pattern tool in order to create copies of objects along arcs instead. So it works in a very similar way in the sense that it works both with sketch geometry as well as with bodies and components and faces and features. But the way it works is fairly simple. So let's say for example that we wanted to add some circular recesses on this face. So let's say we were to go into sketch mode and we're just going to draw a circle maybe two millimeters wide. So within sketch mode you can use the arc to, or the circular pattern tool in order to create a copy of this along a curve. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into create and you're going to look for the option for circular pattern. And so circular pattern is going to basically duplicate this along an arc or a curve. So we would just activate this tool and what it asks us for is it asks us to select our objects and then the center point around which we're going to create our copy. So in this case, our object would be our sketch curve, our circle, and then our center point would just be this point right here. So we're going to go ahead and click on this point, and you can see how what this will do is this will automatically start creating copies around this curve with this as a center point. And so you can adjust the number of copies either by clicking on the little arrow here, by typing in a value, or clicking and dragging this little device right here. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to create eight copies, um, we would just type in the value of eight. And so one thing I want to note about this is not only can you create this along a full circle, you can also create it along an angle. So let's say, for example, that you only wanted this to go 180 degrees around this object. You can see how you can select the option for angle and you can set the total angle that you want this to go along. So if we were to do 270, then it would go three quarters of the way around this circle. And then you can use these tools in the same way. So you can use the slider in order to create your different um, numbers of copies or things like that. So that'll take things and move them in one direction. You can also use the symmetric option in order to take it in both directions. So instead of this going from here around one side, this is now splitting this in both directions based on a number of angles that you, or based on a number of degrees that you select. And so the suppress option allows you to turn different copies on and off. So this gives you the option. So if you uncheck the box for suppress, then there's no check boxes anymore and you can't turn those on and off. And so let's say we were to create eight copies. That would create eight copies centered around this point. We could click finish sketch. So then we could come in here and we could select these with the extrude tool and extrude them in in order to create this recess. And so not only does this work for sketch objects, this also works for objects in the real 3D space. So you can use this to create copies of bodies or also of features. So let's say for example that we wanted to cut a hole in this object down at the base. So if we were to come in here and draw a circle, maybe right here, and then we were to extrude that circle through this face, and I'm not going to use the symmetric option just for this example, but let's say we were to cut a hole inside of this face and click the button for OK, or inside this body and click the button for OK. Well, we could then go into the create option under pattern and you could do a circular pattern and then you would do the same thing where so in this situation we would want to select the drop down and we would want to select features and so when we select features that would allow us to select this hole that we've cut and then we could come in here and select our axis. And note that unlike in sketch mode, because sketch mode is two-dimensional, um, when you're not in sketch mode and you use the circular pattern tool, you select an axis rather than a point. So in this situation, we want to select the blue axis. And you can see how this will allow us to create copies centered around that blue axis. So we could create however many copies we want to inside of this object. And so we could go ahead and click OK. 
and you can see how we've created five copies equally spaced along the perimeter of this object using that tool. And then let's say that we wanted to create multiple different copies of the actual body itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. I'm going to create a copy off to the side and we're going to hide our original body just so that we can do this around this central axis. But let's say that we wanted to create copies of this in a circle around this central axis. Well, what we could do is we could come in here and we could activate the tool. So go to create pattern, circular pattern. And then in this case, we would want our pattern type to be bodies. So I would just select this body and then I would select my axis. So in this case, the blue axis. So you can see how this allows me to create copies centered around this blue axis as well. So it's really easy to create objects around different arcs and different sets of degrees and curves and things like that using this tool. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you use this tool? What do you use it for? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Autodesk Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.